the year is 2023. PBS Plus has just launched bringing the world's streaming services to 4,387. How can anyone be expected to go through all this content? Fear not, loyal passengers. Captain Joe Shoes and his first mate Meds are here to travel through space and time to bring you the best nuggets pop culture has to offer. Strap in. It's time for the Car Jomez Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 362 of the Car Jomez Podcast. I'm Mez, and my co host, as always, is the magistrate of Caravan City and the most toyetic thing to hit toys since the goddamn hula hoop of Captain Joe Shoes. From the car, Jomez Podcast. Yeah, you all, buddy. What's up? Oh, oh no. boy. Nothing, right? Just a <laughs> nah, regular nah. day. Nah, you no know. big life events or anything. <laughs> uh, oh, so thank baby. you guys for listening to the car, Jomez Podcast. Remember to smash that subscribe button wherever it is that you're listening to it. Follow us on all the social media at car, Jomez. Leave a five-star review and maybe... Just maybe head on over to majorpodmerch.com to pick Ooh. up one of the new Captain Joe Shoes figures from Major Bendy's Gomez. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it right oh here. My God, look at this. It is the sexiest Bendy that has ever Bendied. And according to Matt Cardona, he said, it's probably the nicest bendy, and that makes me sick. <laughs> Suck on that. Oh, my good Joe, congrats. My man's got a toy. This is amazing, bro. Wow. It's, uh, it is really nice. I, it's hard to put into words because it's something, like, obviously I've thought about with my friends having a toy company. But knowing what goes in financially to make sure. a figure – it's something that I have never even thought was possible. It's just a very big investment, and I don't think that my low level of fame would ever necessitate uh, an action figure. And having it um, kind of popped on me in the way that it was at Live 17 in Saugus at Kowloon uh, was just really, really cool. And it's I mean, I've played with toys my whole life, and now I get to be one. It's amazing, bro. It's you know, so I, I, and Gomez, I, you know, I sit here a couple of weeks away from be, being 42 years old. And wow. for many of those years, I have been a, a legendary sidecock. I have been a legendary <laughs> plaything. But now, like, the real thing is here. <laughs> now you can really take me into the bathtub and, and juice up bath time with, with Captain Joe Shoes. Oh man, I sh- I gotta buy a couple more now that I think about it. I, I I gotta have some. I want one in the tub. I do. I need one to get wet. He's gotta go in the shower with me. I need my buddy in there. Maybe I got sure throw ideas in there. I can go anywhere. I could go in the bath. I could go to the pool. I could go to the beach. I could go in your butt. Like like Eddie Murphy always said, put some boogie in your butt. And now you can put some shoogie in your butt. You know, in that song, he says, put a tiny little man in your butt. And now I can be that tiny little man in your butt. He's our little tiny man. Look at this. I love it. Reverse Pinocchio over here. A real boy who wants to be a toy. It's come true. It's come true. It's This is awesome. It's so crazy because throughout the day at the show, when they first tell me what I'm doing, Brian Myers runs down the segment. And he's like, Leo Sparrow is going to come out and be a vegan. And you're going to come out and, you know, because you eat meat. And then that's going to be the end of the show. That's good. And I said, how the fuck do you end the show like that? Like, (laughs) where's the go home? Like, I just randomly come out to defend the honor of meat. And then good night, everyone. Drive safe. People love me, bro. We do love like, me. Don't get Come me on. Wrong. I love me. <laughs> like, if anyone's going to do it, I'm the guy. It's perfect. Not going to lie. You know, and I came out with a plate of 
Kowloon food with me, you know, like it's mm. delicious. Uh, but the, you know, the whole thing was like, oh, you know, this is Kowloon. The food is delicious. How dare you disparage uh, all this stuff okay. and the the crab rangoon, which I said probably doesn't have a lot of crab in it, but it certainly got a lot of cream cheese. <laughs> Uh, maybe a, a light spritzing of crab, still very delightful. Sure, uh, you Jesus know, and then those be fighting words. So I went to square up with with Leo Sparrow and Sunil, who was there. Oh, was he? <laughs> so they they tease like the ending of the show, and then Hulk Hogan's music hits, and it's actually Sunil. Oh, I love it. That's a great surprise for you, Sunil. <laughs> so it was the two on one, and who had my back? But Brian Myers came to my rescue. Whoa! And now we're now we're friends again. Oh, you're friends again. I like that. So we did the thing where you know give give him a little bip, a little double noggin knocker, as Gorilla boop. Monsoon used to say. Sure. They got small. Me and Brian hugged it out, and then he said, "Hey, come up on stage. We got a surprise for you." And I sat down. It's very weird because this was the 10th major pod live show that I've been a part of now. And I've never once sat at the stage. I usually come stand in front of it, do my little bit. You know, I'm not like a real guest. I come and I do a skit usually. Yes. Yeah. Part of the show. So I said that I said, it's very odd being here because this is the first time I've ever sat at the table. So uh, Cardona made me take my glasses off. They made me cover my eyes and they put the, image up on the screen for everyone to see i hear a bunch of people pop for it which was a good sign i would have been really upset had they booed yeah that's great (laughs) imagine no (laughs) (laughs) like i I, then i saw it and i wondered if they were ribbing me at first because they had done something similar before with uh mitch from hastel toys and like he he bought into it and he was like oh my god i'm so honored this is amazing and like, so I took a second. I was like, "Uh oh!" And then they dug under the table and they had the prototypes. And I was like, "All right, I guess it's, uh, I guess the coast is clear." Imagine <laughs> that's some rib, bro. <laughs> but it's so weird. Like when you think of like what it takes to have a figure made of you, and not just, you know, not just a character. You know, like He Man is a character. Like sure. this is me. Like this isn't a character I play. Like this. This is how I look real in clothes. real life. Yeah, like those are my real clothes. That's my real mustache. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> so it's it's really, really cool. Um, thank you to everyone who's reached out and a lot of people um, congratulating me. And that's really nice to see. A couple people not so happy. Uh, I guess that is to be expected. Sure. I'm sure. Uh, I mean, the Miz said the haters are good he loves the haters right that's right and if it's good enough for the miz it's good enough for me because the miz got some fucking life I, listen he's, he's fucking rich smoking hot wife been on tv for years he he was like the marine seven times like if, if whatever the miz says is good enough for me you know it's who's true. not fucking cody rhodes that guy's oh come on Finish the story, bro. Come on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the go? No, thank you guys. It's uh it'll be available on majorpodmerch.com until it sells out. It is a uh, limited quantities. Mm-hmm. And when it sells out, it sells out. It's not made to order. So get it while the getting's good. Oh, limited edition for limited edition. Be dialing. Be dialing. <laughs> Oh, we got. We should shoot a little infomercial. Come on, <laughs> Be I put a little reel up for Instagram. And oh, for there you go. A whole thing pitching it. I said for decades I've been playing with myself, but now you have the opportunity to be the one who's doing the playing for us both. Oh, and I can't it. wait until you get me in your hand. Love it. It's good. It's good. People like when it's risque. We like yes. That. It's on double entendres that play to the audience. Get the people going. <laughs> so, yeah, a little kind of a milestone little weekend for me. Uh, definitely mm. not something I was expecting or planning on, but a very nice surprise. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys order it. I hope you guys enjoy it. I don't want to tell you how to spend your money, but if there's one thing to buy, it's fucking a figure of me. 100%. Or if it's not a figure of me that you want, 
go to prowrestlingtees.com slash Joe Shoes and support me there. Love it. How how was the rest of the weekend? The rest of the show was fun. Who was some of the guests? Who, Who, gives, the a guests? Shit. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Oh, God bless. That's right. So uh, uh, John Cena's dad was there. Gave Jay, George, gave Jay George an attitude adjustment through a door. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then he turned that around, looked good. at Brian and said something like, not bad for 78, huh? 78. God bless him, huh? Jesus. Uh, who else do we have? Spike Dudley, Maven, TJ oh. Wilson. Uh, Steve Believe, Stang, Phil Cardigan. Stang, yes. Tell Stang I miss him. It's been a while. Let him know. You love Stang. <laughs> it's great. It's a great thing. If Who Stang don't love Stang? Bend- if Stang had a Bendy, how many of them would you buy? I would at least two. <laughs> at least. Come on. Give it to us. We want it. Oh, man. Well, that's good. I'm very happy for you, Joe. You deserve it. Because you're the best. We all know that, right? That's why they listen to the podcast. Because you're the best. We're the best. I, I tend to agree with that. I am moderately not terrible. <laughs> oh, man. And then oh. my counselor, Jeffs. What? Ooh, what Jeff? What they, Jeff do? Well, they're all, all the Jeffs are buying up these bendies, which is nice. But Jeff Montalvo was there live oh. and in person. And I wasn't even off the stage yet, and he had put his order in. So the second I walked off stage, he had like he was shoving his phone in my face. He's like, "Look, look, look! I bought six of them." He's like, I, I always said if they ever put out a figure of you, I would buy six. And I am a man of my word. And he did it right there. He bought six of them. Well, and what comes, a man! And it comes with a special Captain Joe shoes trading card that they have set up for this. Oh, so he brought it to me uh, right away. They said if you show it, if you show uh, confirmation, Knick will give you the card right there. Oh, that's very awesome. So he got his six cards. He brought one to me, asked if I would sign it, asked if it was the first, and if I would write number one on it. Oh, look at you. This is whew, love. So it. Jeff Montavo got the number one, the first signature edition, and the only one so far. So well deserved. He deserves it. Loyal, if anyone's gonna pack, get it, I was yeah. I'm glad it's him. Yes, love to hear that. Look at that. Oh, you other people, come on. Now you gotta buy seven. You can't let Jeff be number one. Come on, know, everybody. Right? Come on. I will say they're already um getting down to the end. Um, we had a very big first couple of days of sales, and everybody seems to be happy with the way it's going, and wow. I think it's actually gonna sell out. So That's no pay. Don't call me Hangman Page because I'm not warming pegs, baby. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> oh, but really, who wants a Hangman Page toy? Come on. What do we do? Well, I, in all honesty, it's you can't even really blame him because they like overpacked him in the cases because he's like a star. Yeah. So whenever you go into these stores, it's like it's always just Hangman Page. And that's like what Mattel does, though. They they put out you you always want kids to go down the toy aisle and see the big stars. You always want sure. Roman on the shelves. You always want Cena yeah. on the shelves because a kid may not know I, I don't know who's the fat guy that, that does the worm. Oh, I forget his name. I know. Whatever. I've, but like yeah. a kid may not know that, but if he's going to know anything wrestling, it's going to be Roman Reigns. Or sure. Usos at this point. So you want those guys on the shelves because that, that's like having He-Man and Skeletor. Okay, maybe you don't know Man at Arms or Tila, but there's got to be a He Man and Skeletor there for a guy who's just starting his collection. Ah, man, I I understand that, but I wish they would. I wish they would maybe don't overstock. You know, maybe do half a half a, a thing each. We now, is there a ton of fucking Hangman Page on the pegs? Oh yeah, oh yes. there's a lot. I see. Uh, the toys, uh, when I go down the toy aisle, I feel like uh, it's not as crazy as it's been. Where like there's a lot of empty things. It's, I feel like you know it's a nice stock. Like nobody's going crazy as the toy stuff is oh, slowing really? down. Uh, I've seen a lot of kind of both ways. It depends on, okay. I guess it depends on where you are. On what, then, it is what moment? Thing. Because some people seem to have completely bare shelves, and some people yeah. seem to have nicely stocked in a decent selection. 
yeah, I feel like lately when I go to Walmart and Target and stuff, it's been nice. I remember a couple months ago, you know, shit like that. It's, it was crazy. Like, it's always like, damn, where are all these toys at, bro? Well, the most important toy is over at MajorPodMerch.com. So oh, go over there, know. get it. We're selling out. I And honestly, there's a part of my ego that wants to sell out really bad. Oh, it's going to happen. Come on. This, it's happening. Mm, I can't wait. Mm, so we've already done me. we've done really well. I'm like I said, I'm really happy with the way things have gone so far. I'm very appreciative that people are supporting the way they do and that people feel um somewhat emotionally attached to this, like you know, genuinely happy for me. It's it's very humbling. It's um you know, like I said, I don't think you know, like people say, like, oh, you deserve right before I went out, like, and I I I swear to God, I was like, something's gotta be up. Because it just didn't make any sense that we're going to end this show with me <laughs> defending the honor of meat. It made no sense. And the whole day, I'm sitting in the the whole show <sighs> to anyone who would listen. Fucking Stang, Steve Believe, Phil Cardigan, Sunil, Tim Sterling. I was talking Tim Sterling's ear off. I'm like, Tim, it makes no sense. Like, what is happening? You can't end the show with Captain Shoes defending the honor of meat. We're going to kill the town. We'll never be welcome back here. <laughs> We're going to kill the town. <laughs> and, and he's just like, I don't, I don't know, man. It's, I guess it'll be fine. People like you. And I'm like, they don't like me that much. Well, clearly they do, baby. But then Come as on. I'm getting ready to go out, J. George grabs me and he goes, hey, man, whatever happens out there, you deserve it. And I like that's Jay ominous. George. Like, that's like scary. So now, but like I'm going like the worst. Like, are they gonna yeah. fucking like like kill me? You get like, stabbed. Gonna, you get killed yeah, off, bro. Like, Captain Shoes is done. Through my brain or something. Oh, so now I'm like expecting the worst. Like, what the fuck did Jay George just set me up for? Oh my god, that's hysterical. <laughs> And then when I finally hit me that like this was real, I stood up and you know I said you know for all the people that we have that work on the major pod, I I really respect everyone, I like everyone, and I don't really want to steal anyone's gimmick. But Jay George does the major pod rewind every two weeks, and he wasn't he didn't think anyone was listening, so he would start doing karaoke at the end just to see if anyone would notice. Hysteric. Um. So I said I don't want to step on his toes, but maybe you guys will help me sing this song. And I sang the chorus to a moment like this. And uh, a room full of people joined in with me. And it was very nice. This is what a great weekend. I loved it. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to get the video from that. And then, uh, yeah, maybe we could post it somewhere. I'm sure no one will mind. But if you want to watch it, it's up on Premiere Streaming Network right now. So you guys can go. You can watch the replay. It's a lot of fun. And then... um, you know, by the by the bendy in celebration. Yes, baby. Love it. Mm. Love it, love it. Um, let's uh you've met you mentioned hangman. Joe, are you ready for all in this weekend? You ready for Wimbley? Oh, is that is that already? Yeah, this Sunday, baby. Eighty thousand they got eighty thousand people there. Woo! I heard it's basically a sellout, right? Pretty much. That's it's insane. insane. It's insane. When it's they crazy. first announced this, weren't we out here going, I don't know how they're going to do this? I was like, yes. I, I, we, you and I really been looking like a couple jerk-offs with our opinions <laughs> lately. We, we were dead wrong on AEW, uh, dead wrong on Barbie, dead wrong on Oppenheimer. What the fuck do we know at all, Gomez? <laughs> We don't know shit apparently, because my goodness, we did. We talked. I wonder how they're gonna set it up so it don't look so bad, right? You can't have such a big place that's so empty. Oh, and then how so about empty. WrestleMania tickets went on sale this week, yes. and they sold eight, yes. ninety thousand tickets. Insane! It's it's crazy. In Philadelphia, of all places, it's like oh, do I want? Like I want to go because it's closed, but I don't know. It's not, I, I like the two day is good when I'm home, but to go to WrestleMania two times, this sounds exhausting. 
Yeah. Um, I went the one night this year. It was more than enough for me. Uh, I got to see John Cena because he's the best. Um, I do not need to go two nights. I don't really need to go any nights. But I believe I will be in town. I believe the Major Pod will be doing a live show the Thursday night. I, I believe that's still being worked on. Sure. So I don't know if anything is finalized yet, but that seems to be where we're going right now with this. Um, so maybe make your plans for a couple days early. Mm, love to hear that. So, yeah, maybe I'll go to that show on the Thursday and then I'll skip WrestleMania. Maybe that sounds good. I think that's the way to do it. I think we'll do that. And bring your captain shoes, Bendy, to get signed at the merch table. Oh, shit. I didn't even think of that. Oh, I'm definitely coming, baby. Well, Woo! that's why you need multiples. You need one to take in the bathtub and one to get signed. That's what I mean. Because one, I, I, you know, I was, I'm down with letting toys breathe. I'm not, uh, you know, they deserve to be played with. That's their, their mission in life is to, to be played with. I feel bad. They're in a box all the time. But, you know, every once in a while, you do need to keep something in a box. And I want to play with you, Joe. But I don't know. I think you need to be in that box. I listen. If there's one place I love to be, it's inbox. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a show this week! <laughs> uh, Gomez, how about we hit the breaking news music? Oh yeah! Breaking news. Oh, what's what's happening? What's, what's Captain going on? Captain Joe Shoes what? Action Theater. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where can we find that? I don't know. Uh, MajorPodMerch.com. Uh, no, that's not the that's not the breaking news. Uh, you know what? That is the breaking news. That and is breaking out. news. Thank you and good night. Try the veal. <laughs> well, Tip your way. Come on. Um, Gomez, McDonald's. Ooh, Big wow. announcement coming October. What? Guess what's coming back? The Boo Buckets. Oh, that was cool last year. After they brought them back last year. Now, I would hope that they're going to bring them back with the actual fucking cap on them. And not that little... It was like the thing that spun halfway. It wasn't like a real top. No, it wasn't. So It was still cool to see. Yeah. But uh, hopefully, like, I know for a while, it was hard to get your hands on them. Uh, so uh, hopefully, yeah. In certain areas, it was. I didn't have a problem with it. I didn't get the one I wanted. I got the the orange pumpkin. I really wanted the white ghost. So I, I don't know. I just missed out on the white ghost. You see, that's so always been go. my favorite one. I get. I think I got the pumpkin or the witch. I don't remember which one, but I was happy with the white well, ghost. Is see, cool. Lounge Fly this year is producing some. Limited edition boo bucket backpacks. You know, they make the small backpacks. They do a ton of Disney ones. They just did a whole series of 90s Disney stuff that's coming on right now. So they just did a Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Oh, really cool. It's supposed to be like their plane. So it's got little wings on the side. Great. But they're doing boo buckets bags. Oh, that's very cool. Are these bags expensive? They're they... not that bad. They are mini bags. I want to say they were about 40 bucks, and I saw them That's up for so pre-order bad. at Hot Topic. Oh, Hot Topic. Oh, baby. So I did see those. Now, Gomez, I don't know if you saw this. There was a little viral moment in the Yankee game last week where a gentleman was caught drinking a beer through a hot dog. He turned the hot dog into a straw and was sipping his beer through the hot dog. I did not see this. <laughs> well, leave it to Yankee fans. But uh, Oscar Meyer, in their infinite wisdom, oh, there we go, has seen this and now is doing a giveaway of hot dog straws. So, like funny. genuine hot dog sized plastic straws that you can get for free by going to slash hot dog straw. I'm going right um, now. Every day they have a certain <laughs> amount that will be given out for free up until September 5th. That's pretty cool. See, that's good. That's what you people need to do. It's like, oh, let's jump on it. Let's go. Hot dog straw. It's brilliant. Now I just Great. want a regular hot dog. You know what I mean? We're talking about hot yeah. dogs. I just want a hot dog now. It but works. I, I'm getting one. I'm already in. <clears throat> I can't wait till they ship, ship it to me. One of my all-time favorite things, and I've talked about this on the podcast multiple times at this point in all the years that we've been doing it. I love 
the Oscar Mayer weenie whistle scene yeah, from the Santa Claus with Judge Reinhold. That's all he ever wanted in life was to get the Oscar Mayer weenie whistle. I finally got one myself, one of the best days of my life, up until I got my own action figure. You guys may have, or may not have heard about that yet. Um, but Oscar Mayer, even though their hot dogs are not my favorite, yeah, I'm okay. more of a ballpark guy. I like them like they have the cheese one. So like I use that for the that. The cheddar you know? worst. Ooh. Mm. I meant just the Oscar Mayer with the, the, the cheese dogs one. Mm. But I, I do love Hill, cheddar worst. I want to say there's I, like Hillshire Farms does the cheddar worst. Yeah. Ooh. Better cheddar. Better cheddar. Mm, those are good. Yeah, I love that. With some rice aroni. Mm, cheesy rice aroni. Delicious. Uh hot ones, Gomez. We all we all know and love hot ones, right? Yeah. Well, come into your frozen food section at Kroger's. If you got a Kroger's nearby, two flavors of frozen chicken strips. One is spicy garlic with classic sauce. The other is smoky habanero with Los Calientes Rojo sauce. Oh, it's the Rojo. Okay. I love the green one. The Los Calientes green is. Oh, verde. Yes, Joe. <laughs> Correct. That one is fantastic. Me hablo right. español. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's no Kroger's over here, so this doesn't excite me much. I don't know where they're. I don't, I don't know. There's a Kroger's by me either. I don't know I don't where the know. one is. There is. I did see Hot Ones is at Target now. They have some flavors Ooh. there. So that's nice to be able to get that without that damn shipping cost. So one last thing, Gomez. Domino's Ooh. Pizza. Ooh, well, we got Domino's. They are giving us the pepperoni stuffed cheesy bread. Ooh, bro, this sounds excellent. Basically looks like a calzone to me. And honestly, Domino's Pizza, why haven't you done this years ago? Oh, so it's it's like a... Oh, so it's a little different? So it's not so just... It's the cheesy a... bread that we all... That we love. Yeah. But it's got pepperoni stuffed on the inside. Oh. You made you said it sound like calzone. I got excited. Well, to like me, was... that's like a calzone. Sure, it is like a calzone. I get you. I get you. It is because I got excited because I know like uh, what well, Pizza Hut has like that weird calzone thing or something. The, the pizzone. Pizzone. Yeah. So like I was like, oh, Domino's got one of these weird things now. But no. Hey, apparently not. we know Ben Wyatt loves his calzones, especially tiny calzones. I love a calzone. Calzones are fantastic because who does don't want all that cheese, right? Get that ricotta cheese, yo. yo. I don't understand it. When people shit on calzones, like, you got to be a real fucking jerk to shit on <laughs> a calzone. Come on, bro. Like, just, just say it. Just, just, just say it. You're, you're fucking cheesist. <laughs> it's true, bro. Come on. It's just cheese. How could you not love it? Oh, it's so good. Do you ever put meats in your calzone? Every once in a while, I'll put a little ham in All there. the time. All the time. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if they're going to let you put meat, why wouldn't you? Oh, I'm sorry. You can add meat to your cheese? Yeah, no thanks. What am I, fucking dumb? <laughs> Joe, what are you going to use your hot dog straw? I just realized. What you going to you gonna drink a soda? What are you going to use it for? put it in my two-liter bottle of Diet Cherry Cola. <laughs> Okay, I'm excited for that. Are you going to do a video or something? Because I think people want to see this. I'm just going to go live video. on like Instagram oh, or something and hey, just excellent. drink two liters of soda <laughs> quietly through my hot dog straw. You're just sitting there. <laughs> Don't say anything. There was a couple of years ago, I went live on Facebook and just ate a tube of cookie dough quietly. Like, didn't say a word, didn't interact. And it, like, I had like 50 people watching and just. Like commenting about like the spectacle of like people were like this is like being at the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, bro! Just sitting there eating cookies. <laughs> God bless you, Joe. <laughs> this is why he deserves a toy. <laughs> this is right why there. I have an action figure. I put in that work. <laughs> oh, oh, that's man. it for the news, Gomez. What you have going on this week? You know, not much. Uh, got a couple things I could talk about here. Let's start with I watched the I watched the comedy special, Joe. You know, I'm watching comedy specials. This one was on Max. It starred our double main man, Tracy Morgan. Oh, yo, Blue Man, where your feet at? <laughs> 
Yeah, he's the best. Oh, so I'm like, hey, we all love this man. Let's let's watch let's watch this. And uh, I gotta say, I I think he's really good at small doses, right? I don't know <laughs> if uh, I don't think a, a 50 minute special because he's very all over the place. Like you know, that's his thing. Like that's not like it's any different because he's doing stand up. He's still yeah. doing the same type of shit where. He's talking about something. All of a sudden, he's talking about something else and something else. And so, so you know, uh, it's okay. And even the things he was talking about, he's very, you know, he's an old man, you know, so he has some old man toy takes, you know, I, you know, I get it. But uh, it wasn't, I, I didn't enjoy it. It's probably maybe the worst one I've seen this year. I've seen about 10 of them. Wow. And this one, yeah, I just, you know. We laughed like at the first five, ten minutes, and then it was just a lot of quiet. You know, I was just clicking because now we're just scrolling on our phone, not paying it. It was just yeah. not a good, not a good time. The opposite of what we wanted, right? We watching it to laugh, have a good time, and no, I love good times. <laughs> so you know, I think we're gonna avoid that one. Uh, don't bother with that one, folks. Don't even. It's on max, but don't, don't, don't worry about it. You know. Oh well. Do that. <laughs> Hopefully it's something else. It seems like every week there's a, a new comedy. If it's on either Amazon, yeah, Netflix, Netflix, they're all trying Max. to get into this game. And Pretty what much. happens when you do that is you water it down. <laughs> I mean, listen, everybody gets a comedy. It seems like it's not as special anymore. Like I don't a comedy I mean, special is the equivalent of having a podcast in today's age. Right, like that was something you always you 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 worked on your tight your tight set, you know, make it ready for a, for like a special. George Carlin used to get a comedy special, yeah, like and that was it. It was it you had to be top t- Certain, top tier, yeah. top notch, and now you it's work like your way up. I, I've never fucking heard of, have never done a fucking Fletch movie, or even been on SNL or anything, and it's like, oh, here's. This guy, and he's a veteran, a twelve-year vet of the comedy scene. It's like, <laughs> damn, that's like bro. being a fucking indie wrestler, like big fucking deal. <laughs> oh, you worked a stage in fucking Peoria, Illinois. Great. Well, I wrestled in fucking Xenia, Ohio, one time. No one gives a shit. <laughs> what's the what's the least amount of people that was at one of these indie shows you wrestled at, Joe? Oh, geez, I wrestled in front of crowds like less than ten. Damn, that's so crazy. <laughs> you give it your I've wrestled, wrestled in front of crowds, you know, a couple thousand people as well. So, you know, 50,000 in the Silver Dome. I remember, of course. Well, when I did the Tokyo Dome back in 76 <laughs> against Valentine, when we did the 37 hour Iron Man match, uh, that was a big house. Yeah. You know. <laughs> oh. And I remember going to the back and, and telling Baba, I said, Hey, Baba, thank me for the house. <laughs> and he knew better than to not thank me for the house. Of course. I mean, listen, you bring in a house like that, if there better be some thanks thrown around. I agree. <laughs> oh, goodness. Joe, I watched the movie. I'm not going to talk too much about the movie because I think... We're going to watch this movie to start off six weeks of horror. I think I found our starting movie for this year. Okay. You know, the past two years, we watched Malignant. Uh, Malignant. We yeah. watched Barbarian. You know, oh. new horror that was like, you know, crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. so I watched a movie this week called Cobweb. Uh, it played like for one week at the movie theater. And now it's on VOD. So you got to pay it's for about it. an old virgin. So it's about a family, a mom, and a dad, and a son, and uh, stuff is happening in the house, you know. So, you know me, I don't, I don't know nothing about these movies. So it was sold to me as it's kind of this year's *Malignant* and *Barbarian*. Like it's like okay. this kind of movie where you don't know where it's going. It takes some twists and turns. So you know, I, I like to start with a recent movie. So I think. I think in a couple months it'll probably be on a streaming service by then. If not, we'll twitch it up. But uh, I think uh, I think I'm gonna make you watch this movie, Joe. I think it has a good 
like you know either what did i watch or that was crazy you know i think it go either way and either way leads to goodness right folks we love oh, it oh yeah <laughs> we well, love <laughs> i watched a movie this week gomez <laughs> called the venture brothers radiant Ooh. is the blood Ooh. of the baboon heart and you and i have spoken about this we couldn't yeah. wait to see it we love the venture brothers and i think you're still doing your rewatch Yes, to see I where st- it left off. So I assume you have not caught up to the movie yet. No, I still got to watch the last season. I'm, I'm still season six, I believe. Okay, I'm, uh, so I'm almost there. So I, I, I don't want to watch a movie because I know you know it's very serialized. The Venture Brothers, even though things might be happening in different things, they always go back to stuff you know that's happening. So and with this too, this is a lot I of callbacks, figured. a yeah, lot of I references. Yeah. So there is a lot going on here where I'm like being refreshed as if as sure. it's happening at no point did i feel lost but i'm also a venture brothers fan i don't yes. think this is for people who who haven't watched the series yeah okay, if, definitely. if you've never seen the venture brothers i don't think you should watch this movie not because it's not good i just don't think you're gonna get the enjoyment out of it that you would if you have watched the series already because so much of it is inside jokes and references to prior plot points and things that have happened in the previous okay. seven seasons. And honestly, if you're a venture, if you are a venture brothers fan, you're going to love this. This oh, is just a long episode of the venture brothers doing venture brothers things. It's Ooh. terrific. I, I give it my highest regards and encourage all of you who enjoy the venture brothers to go see radiant is the blood of the baboon heart. Do you uh did they wrap things up like a like a finale like this is it like this is They wrapped up a, a, a decent amount of plot points. It doesn't feel like a finale finale, okay. but if this is all we get, I think I'm okay with it. Sure. All right. Mm, okay. I'm uh I'm definitely I'm chugging along, you know. I, I it's slow and steady, but I have I have been watching, you know, whenever I have a little free time, I try to watch two or three episodes, you know, get mm-hmm. it in there because I do love it. I'm enjoying, you know, like I said, I, I with the crazy schedule that they had, I, I missed a lot because it's like, oh, wait, it's back. What's this? Yeah. I didn't even know. So I'm very interested to see the movie. Probably. What is this? August? Yeah. Probably when it's on HBO. By the time, though, they kick that shit off the thing, I'll probably be done with it. I'm sure. Yeah. A couple more weeks. Hmm. Joe, I got a new book from the library, and this Ooh. one, oh, this one I think is going to interest you. I know you haven't been booking it up lately, but if you ever do, you might want to check out a, a book here. It's called Where Are Your Boys Tonight? The I hope Oral... they are gentlemen. That's right. I had to stop myself because every time I want to say it, I've got to start singing. So I'm like, no. is this... Mate, Let's just do it. Where, Where is, is your, your boy? T- Why are you so slow? Why are we I, I feel like you're behind. You're so slow. I'm trying to <laughs> match with you. May- maybe there's a little delay there because I was I was trying to slow down because you were. <laughs> I felt I was way ahead of you. Oh my god! I That's hope funny. he is a gentleman. gentleman, and maybe he won't find out. But I, I know, know you were the, you were ba- the last, last good, good thing, thing about, about this, this part, part of town. Of town. Oh my goodness. Uh yes, it's the oral history of Emo's mainstream explosion that was 99 to 2008. Oh so man, is, those are good years. Yeah, it's 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 good. Yeah. So like, you know, I don't know a lot of this stuff cuz I'm 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 uh, you know, Fallout Boy is my shit, but I got into Fallout Boy later towards the end of the explosion, you know, like of course I Everyone knows dance, dance, and you know you couldn't escape it because it was a fucking thing, you know. Yes, but I was more. It you know, was a MySpace song. Yes, with the, the uh, Panic at the Disco, MySpace. Oh, they got popular yes. because of MySpace. That's how they blew up. It's and like Cascada, crazy to hear. When I think of MySpace, I think of Panic at the Disco and Cascada. That every so time funny. we touch, I get this feeling. <laughs> Oh, so it's very interesting. Like I said, so I don't really know much about like the early days and even bands like, you know, Dashboard Confessional. All I know is our boy Pete loves them, but, you know, that's not really a band for me. I've never really been into, I like certain into that songs. stuff. 
And so, but you know, it's an interesting story, like how they got, you know, how he did his thing. They were everyone is basically in all these other bands, and then they all just break off and kind of start a new band and a new thing. So it's, it's very about interesting. Feelings. Yeah, it is. Everyone was very into their feelings about their mental health. This is very interesting stuff. You know, my favorite thing about those that segment of years is that I still had a future. When I look back at those years, I say, man, there was a young buck with a dime in his pocket and a dream in his heart, and he was going places. And you know what? He's got a motherfucking action figure coming That's out. That's right. He went places, folks. <laughs> he went to Saugus, Massachusetts. Bro, you you are a He-Man character, and you have a toy. Life is good, bro. Life turned life. out okay. You know, it's not so life. bad. I know. Uh, I'm actually interested in this book. I would actually give it a read. Have you finished it? Uh, I got a couple chapters left. I think I got four chapters left. We're about up to 2006, 2007. So we're towards the end of the book. But it's just very interesting. What's crazy is um, they talk about how like they did Warp Tour and they signed up for like Warp Tour before they got popular. So by the time Warp Tour comes along, they're on like a second stage in the corner. And they got the biggest crowd every night because they weren't supposed. They were just a regular band, yeah. It's, and it's like three, happened like three or four times to these bands. They just it keeps happening. They just pop off, boom. And also like all these bands, like a Pete Wentz, like he had like a label, and like so he was signing these bands. He's like, I want to sign you. Like he was in charge of bringing all these people. So it's like this is Fall Out Boy. God bless you, Pete. You're a great <laughs> man. But a lot of joy, not just Fall Out Boy. You give us. Who don't love all these other bands, right? I love Panic at the Disco. My Chemical Romance. Come on. It's good shit, bro. And I used to like his bar in New York City, Angels and Kings. I went there quite a few times. Oh, is that not is that not around anymore? I would I would bet not. I would think not. Maybe. You never know. That but that was when he was still married to Ashley Simpson. So I, yeah. I think it was a that was a long ass time ago. Yeah. Gomez, Those I watched kids. one other thing this week. It is uh, on Netflix. It's called Untold Johnny Ooh. Football. The story of Johnny oh. Manziel. <laughs> oh, Johnny Manziel, folks. Man, this is something. And I want to sit here and tell you it's great. Because there's like some stuff that's just like fucking ridiculous in within this documentary. But the fact of the matter is it's not great. Have, did, have you watched it yet? No, but I've heard people talk about it. And I hear that it's, I hear it's not great. That's kind of why, like, it's like kind of sugarcoat. Like, you would want a little more juiciness in this Well, thing. what is they that... do is they they spend a good majority of this docu-pick on the fact that, oh, he was this amazing high school and college football player. And, okay, that's fine. Sure. But we're not here for that. Like, we knew that shit already. Yeah. Where's the downfall? And they get into it, but... They kind of creep over it. And then there's that like one point where he's talking about he was in a headspace after the whole thing with the Browns, where he's in a headspace where he just decides he's going to party, spend as much money as, as possible, and then he's going to go kill himself. But his gun malfunctioned Jeez. and he didn't and he wasn't able to do it. And that gets like 30 seconds of time in this movie. <laughs> it's kind of important, huh? <laughs> and they, they, don't get me wrong. There's like stuff here where it's like, oh, Johnny never watched film. He never read his playbook. You know, what people used asshole. to say, oh, it's because he's such a dedicated uh, guy in the study room that he was able to play the way he was. It was like, no, it's just that he doesn't know what the fuck else to do. The guy had no aptitude for anything. All he wanted to, and I don't blame him. If, if I'm 19 years old, and everybody is sucking my dick and kissing my ass at one time. Guess what? I'm going to go party. I'm going to go fuck a bunch of girls. Uh, yeah. I'm going to fucking live it up because not everyone is ready to handle that. It yeah. is a very slippery slope to being super famous over fucking night. And here's this guy at 19, a freshman in college. He's the Heisman Trophy winner. He's one of the biggest names in sports. He's showing up to places and guys are meeting him at the airport like, 
hey, if you come to this hotel, we'll pay you three grand in cash to sign autographs. And he's like, all right, fuck it, let's go. And then some guy there is like, yo, you're getting fucking hosed here. Come outside. We'll give you 30 grand to fucking sign some autographs. And he's like, all right, let's fucking go. And this man just had piles and piles of fucking cash. Piles and piles of cash that he was giving to his grandfather and then having his grandfather write him a check so it looked like he was getting a gift from family to you be able that. to go on a fucking vacation or to be able Smart. to buy a fancy car. It's like that shit is insane. But like you have this really good opportunity to really focus in on the mental health aspect of this guy's story, which is obviously still going on because yes. he's so he's so in the moment when he tells these stories like he wishes they were still going on today. You can tell. Of course. Like, I, and his sister comes on and she's like, you know, he's still not well. Hmm. And like, that's a fucking red flag. And we're sitting here still kissing his ass and sucking his dick. And is he getting better? I don't know. Is he off Coke? Is he off Oxys? I don't know because they gloss over it and they just want to act like, oh, it's boys being boys. This guy had a great time. So what if he threw everything away? Boys being boys. That's to the extreme, bro. That's not uh... a... <laughs> Like Yo, stupid. even like before his pro day, before like he had to audition for coaches and stuff, he got his receivers so fucking drunk the night before that they couldn't show up to catch for him. That he had to have his fucking agent and his lawyer, like whatever, oh. running patterns so he could throw to them. Fucking ass. He's so stupid, bro. <laughs> uh, so it's just... But yeah. It's it's entertaining, sure, but is it a yeah. good documentary? I, I can't say that it is. Hmm. How, do you watch a lot of those Untold? I know we've watched a couple of them. Um... I, I do. Whenever they pop up, if I see something that interests me, then I'll, I'll for sure turn it on, even if it's only something I may know about in passing. Uh, you know, Usually I like stuff I don't know a lot about. Do you feel like they usually the better, like uh, with handling that stuff do you feel like them usually more for the entertainment value well i i think they are more for the entertainment base but i don't know that they've had a story like this one before where mental health and possible sure. suicide and stuff like that have played a role in it like they, they did one on like the n1 mixtape tour yeah and that's really just like uh hey this was a thing that was really big for a moment had it shine and then just kind of went away and like here's the story of that so to I don't want to say that they kind of shy away from stories like this, but I don't necessarily know that they've tackled this kind of subject matter before. And obviously someone in the editing room, whether that be producers, director, whoever made a conscious decision to just say, Oh, we're going to kiss this guy's ass for 40 minutes and then mention all the bad stuff. And then kind of just uh, wrap it up. Like, Hey, that wasn't that a good time. The time of Johnny football. Yeah, I'm looking. So this year, yeah, they seem like they don't really. They do like uh, Monta. Was it Monta Teo? What's that guy's name? Monta Teo. Like the, they Manta did the one, yeah. yeah, it's like stuff like that. They did uh, Tim Donaghy betting on NBA. So yeah. it doesn't seem like they go to yeah. So that that is like probably the heaviest uh, that they dealt with. And so they yeah it makes sense. Then it seems like they're not uh, interested in that kind of shit. All right. Well. Netflix Untold, Johnny Football. You know, it's interesting. You might enjoy it, but don't come there for hard hitting documentaries. Yeah, this isn't a uh, 2020 or, or an E60 you're getting here. <laughs> Dateline, Johnny Football. <laughs> In a world where a man is hooked on oxycodone. <laughs> Uh, he was. They did a. He was on an interview. I listened to an interview. He was on a show I listened to, and uh, someone brought up uh, how he had someone pee for him or something. Yeah. To pass the test, and on the show he said, "Oh, that's not true." He's like started like getting angry that they brought it up and talking about how it's not true, and then. Two days later, they said they watched it and like, and they go had a whole thing about this guy Pete. Like, what the fuck? 
Oh, I love it. Come piss in this cup for me, bro. You clean? Yo, you even, good? He said, like, leading up to the draft, he was, like, being good, being good, being good. And then, like, right before he went out and got, like, absolutely smashed, he was at, like, some – I don't know if it was a playmate party or whatever, but he's – and all of a sudden – Oh, it was for the combine. It was leading up to the combine. Jesus. So, like, where you know you're getting tested. Yeah. And they Jesus. come up with a story where he was going to show up at the combine. And they had his parents all in on this. They were going to say his father had emergency, was rushed to the hospital. So, he was going to have to leave the combine. Oh, my God. And, like, this whole they had to concoct this whole fake situation to try to get him out. <laughs> And then he gets there and he goes, you know what? I'll be fine. And he's just like drinking gallon after like just absolute, basically attached a hose to his mouth and is trying to flush everything possible out. I don't think it works that way, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, Joe, I didn't watch anything else except for. Yeah, that's um, all I got, too. Um, I guess it's time to, to start our little main event here. Oh, baby. Blue Beetle. Ooh, I'm Gomez, excited. you got to tell me. Uh, now I'm going to say real quick. I'm probably going to get a lot of heat with this. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Starting like this. Uh-oh. Because. I, you know, I'm not even going to wait. I'm going to tell you right up front. This is one of the worst movies I've seen this year. Jeez. This movie's terrible. Terrible. There is absolute outside of the kid's performance who plays B Blue Beetle, the uh, Zolo Maraduena from Cobra Kai, He's who fantastic. I think is fine in this. He's great. He's yeah. very good. There is nothing else to like about this movie. And... As I watch, as I read people's reviews and I see people's reactions coming up in my timeline, they don't have anything good to say about the movie outside of the fact that it's representing Latino culture, Mexican heritage, you know, Hispanic family values, all that stuff. And that's fine. And I can appreciate all that. But that still doesn't make it a good movie. I understand that representation matters, but a bad movie is still a bad movie. So I've been catching some heat over this, but I also don't have any connection to this character, Blue Beetle. So before we even get into the real movie, and I will further expand on why it sucks, um, Gomez, what kind of connection do you have to the character of Blue Beetle? Zero. Zilch. Uh, I almost watched... There's a Blue Beetle like little cartoon uh, short that DC did a couple years ago. I almost watched that when it first came out. Like, oh, what's this? But other than it being, oh, he's the Hispanic superhero. I don't know shit about the Blue Beetle. He is nowhere on my radar. Okay, good. So now I don't feel bad. When I first hear the character, <laughs> oh, they're doing Blue Beetle. And I see some people are excited about that. And because... There are people who like anything. There are people who like everything. There, there's something for everyone in this world. And if Blue Beetle is what you like, that's great. And now DC has done plenty of these movies. Now this is movies a little different where it may be attached to the yeah. upcoming James Gunn universe, but it may not be. But apparently the actor will be attached playing Blue Beetle, even if whatever happens in this movie doesn't mean anything toward the upcoming universe. So who the fuck knows what's going on there? It obviously didn't set the world on fire because it only did $25 million opening at the box office. Did come in first. Finally knocked Barbie Whoa. out of the number one position. Oh, Weppa. Take that, Barbie. Woo! Barbie still with a strong $21 million right Damn, behind it. Damn, Jesus Christ, man. That's so crazy. Up to $566.8 million domestically. That's yes. crazy. It's the crazy. Uh, the other big release this week was Strays, the dog yes, movie with the dog, Will Ferrell. Dog. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know I love my talking animals. Mm. Have not seen it. It only made eight million reviews. Are not great. Uh, maybe Can't I'll imagine. get to. Maybe I'll get to that. I I don't know. I'm in no hurry. No hurry. But oh, obviously, oh. people were not flocking to the theaters to see Blue Beetle. Sure. So you say to me, Joe, what is this movie about? What is it about? An alien scarab chooses Ooh. college graduate Jaime Reyes to be its symbiotic host 
bestowing the teenager with a suit of armor that's capable of extraordinary and unpredictable powers forever changing his destiny as he becomes the superhero known as Blue Beetle. I mean, that's that's the perfect description of the movie. It's the perfect description for every goddamn superhero movie that's ever existed in the past fucking 20 years. And there is nothing, 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 nothing original about this fucking movie. Every single thing, every single scene, every single quote, every single fight, every single everything in this goddamn two hour and seven minute boar fest has been done to fucking death in every goddamn superhero movie that has existed for the past 20 fucking years. And these sure. motherfuckers want to come and tell me that I don't fucking get it. Well, maybe if you were ahead of the curve 20 years ago and put out a fucking movie before anyone saw fucking Iron Man, before anyone saw fucking Thor, before anyone saw fucking anything, then maybe this movie would be worth a shit. But until then, this movie is fucking worthless. That's a lot of fire for this stupid ass movie. Yes, yeah, an origin story. So it hits the beats that you would hit an well, origin the story. Origin outside of oh my god, there's a robot attached to my back. We know nothing about the fucking scarab. We we barely go into the fucking history. Where did it come from? What does it do? Why was it hidden? We get this fucking minute little story about fucking Ted. Co- oh yeah, you know he, he he oh the fucking white man was the blue beetle back in the real cool. But I've got a fucking crazy George Lopez, and I can't fucking stand George Lopez. I. And we get fucking George Lopez all of a sudden knows how to operate a fucking spacecraft that he just happens to find because he thinks he's Doc Brown from Back to the Future. It's, it's everything is fucking terrible. Everything is fucking terrible. Do you normally like George Lopez? Never. And I especially hate him here. I hated almost every family member in this in this movie. Damn, the Joe. Annoying sister. The fucking, oh, the the grandmother who's toting machine guns all of a sudden. Like, everything is some fucking stereotype movie movie character that we've seen a billion fucking times. And then, of course, we got to kill, like, right in the very beginning where they're like, oh, you know, while you were at school, dad had a heart attack. I Let me guess. He's going to fucking die. And now he becomes, he embraces Blue Beetle. That way he could get his revenge on the white lady. I get it. I get it. You you have to give him some kind of trauma. That way he's willing to accept these powers. I've fucking seen it a thousand goddamn times. And I've seen it done better. So what was the fucking point of this goddamn fucking shitbag of a movie? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I knew you, you didn't like the movie, but woo, this is. And then I'm trying to engage with people. And I've had some very nice discussions with people online talking about this movie. And and people have said to me, like, oh, you don't understand what it means for the Latino culture. Okay. What, what does it mean? Oh, well, you know, it's big for us because that's our guy. Blue Beetles only existed for, what, 20 years? 2003 was the introduction of Blue Beetle? Am I missing something there? No, don't believe so. So this isn't someone like for generations you've been hoping to get a movie out of. But we just went through this with Black Panther. And guess what? Black Panther did it a whole fucking lot better. We just went through the this is the culture for our character. Uh, The character for our culture, excuse me. And it was just done so much better. So what? Now I'm getting like, oh, like the Vicks Vapor Rub. That was for us. You don't have the fucking market cornered on Vicks Vapor Rub. I, my fucking grandmother put fucking Vicks Vapor Rub on my chest every night when I fucking went to bed. I, I, under no circumstance did I ever think that a fucking Vicks Vapor Rub was exclusively Latino. <laughs> uh, it's not, but it's used but, a lot. Yeah, a lot of people use it. It's it, The whole thing here is that whenever I have spoken to people and they have not been contentious conversations, let me put that out there. They have nothing good to say about the movie. No one has anything good to say about the movie itself. It's simply, it's for the culture. And that 
fucking irks me because it's it shouldn't be enough to just and maybe this is me I, everyone listening to this feel free to tell me i'm wrong feel free to tell me it's white privilege that i don't get it because i'm used to i i've never had to think twice about having the culture represented but it shouldn't be enough to have shit pieces of art put out there just because it's some form of representation you should want more you should demand better and anything would be better than what you got in blue beetle because all you got was a rehashing of fucking 15 fucking white superheroes and a black one Uh, so I say some good things about the movie. Uh, you know, it's it's fun. I think it's a fun movie because of the performances. It's like it's not a you know, it's a, this tone is silly. You know, the family's having a good time, so it's a fun. You know, like it's fun banter back and forth. Joe hates all of them, so he doesn't think it's fun banter back and forth. But I think. People who enjoy the movie enjoy the family dynamic of the movie, of the crazy uncle and the you know stuff like that. Uh, the performances are good, not just uh, not just uh, Jaime Reyes' character. Zolo's great, but uh, you know Susan Sarandon's plays a a nice bad guy. Uh, the uh, she the- plays a believable heel. Yes, I give her that. You know, so you know, there's some some good performances here. I say the action isn't great. Nothing stands out with the action. Like it's all okay. There's nothing like oh, if I go, what's my favorite action scene? I'm like I don't know, the highway or this. That. Like there's nothing that stands out. So I will say that there is no standout action mode. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe something was supposed to stand out, but to me, that's not what stood out. Other things stood out. Uh, what else? Uh, you know, that's it. It's just, uh, it's, it's a fun, I thought it was a fun little movie. I just think in today's world where we have been inundated by all these superhero movies for two decades now, what's even the purpose of this? There is none. There is no purpose to this movie. If you're not going to do something new, if you're not going to do something different, if you're not going to do something that pushes the boundaries a little bit more, just to introduce a character for the sake of introducing a character, which is what this is and nothing more, there is no point in even putting the money up front when this DC extended universe has been such a colossal money pit. I understand originally this was supposed to be direct to HBO Max. Maybe they make some of that money back by putting it in theaters. Who knows? I can't imagine... It's going to even come close to matching what it made last week. The drop-off's going to be, geez, it's got to be at least, if it's if it's only fifty percent, I'd be shocked. Nah, it's probably going to make like six, seven million probably. Exactly. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, what was the point of this movie? Well, but you said it. The point of this movie is just a, a content. Uh, because that's what most of the movies we are getting are, are just, is just for content. So this was, hey, let's let's do a Spanish thing. Like you said, it was supposed to go straight to streaming. That's it was originally planned. So that proves that it's just it's just content. It was just, hey, let's get the Spanish character out there. Let's tap the the Hispanic market, and uh, let's see what we got here. And that's all it is. I think uh, maybe because of the performances, James going to bring them back. Obviously, I, we aren't going to get a, a Blue Beetle 2, but maybe he shows up like in Peacemaker. Maybe he shows up in another movie. You know, I, I think he'll do something with him again. But, uh, yeah, no, we're definitely not going to get a Blue Beetle 2 because we don't need a Blue Beetle 2. Even if this movie was good, like you said, it, there was no purpose. It is just to be there. So, yeah. you know, it is, it's, you know. I can't say nothing that. That's the and truth. Even I'm looking at the the scores online. IMDb 6.8. To me, that's wildly generous. And then on Rotten Tomatoes, the audience gave it a 92. percent And to me, that, that is absurd. Could, but because that just means that they're just 92 percent of people are just having fun, having a good time with it. I just think because it's because it's nothing. Like it's just this little little movie. 
So people are just going in like, oh, let's just watch. Oh, that was fine. No, that was fun. There was some action. He did it. He had a big sword and stuff like that. You know, he flew around, fought the red mean guy. You know, shit like that. <laughs> uh, you know, that's just. I, I that's what I'm saying. I, I I knew you didn't like it, but I did, I wasn't expecting all that fire for for this movie because to me it's just such a small little stupid like. You know, I'll never think of it again after this episode gets up. Well, I look at it like this now. And I like, you know how we talk about like the ratings. I mean, you and I talk about box office every week and it's like, who gives a fuck? It's not our money. But at the same time, the money dictates what kind of what we get. We get. Of course. And the fact that this movie fucking sucks so goddamn hard. The fact that so much money went into this movie sucking so fucking hard. I mean, hopefully it means we don't get a blue beetle too, but not only that, but they have to be like, give us something better. But look at like, and now they're, they're going to fuck up Barbie. We know they're going to fuck up because now, because it did so well, we're going to, there's going to be Barbie 18, Barbie 21, and it's got to be more goofy, more, you know, it'll be the ghostbusters effect. And I, I get that, but this movie just has so little to offer that you could have done everybody a big favor by just keeping the money in your pocket and trying to think of something else to do. Well, it turned out that way. You know, remember this was announced long before DC. Remember there was a, a year where, you know, Shazam, Aquaman, like, you know, for a while DC was like, Oh, look at DC. You know, now I've had people tell me, Oh, I liked it more than the flash. And I could kind of get that. But yeah, the fact that, the, the fact of the matter is the Flash already existed. Shazam already existed. You know, Aquaman has already existed in this space. You took time and you took money to give us a character that has never existed in, in our movie universes before and who has nothing original or impressive about him, whether that becomes setting, whether that become armor, whether that's fight scenes, storyline, Backstory, there is nothing, nothing worth getting invested in in this movie. And it's just a sad fucking long two hours and seven minutes, which is the shortest DC movie ever. Like, I should be doing backflips that they were able to cut it to 207. And instead, I'm going, holy shit, this is, this is even worse than fucking Batman v Superman colon Dawn of Justice. That's crazy. I, I will say the movie could have been shorter. Always, they could have trimmed a little bit, but I, but it wasn't, I, you know, it doesn't drag, drag, you know, it takes a while to get going, I think, and then once, but once it gets going, it's pretty, things are happening at all times, you know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. Let's hit some music here. Oh boy, let's see how many negatives I have to put up on this graphic this week. <laughs> Are you a man? A double main man? Are you a man? A triple main man? A man, man, man? A quadruple main man? Are you a man? Are you a man? Joe. Oh, baby. Blue Beetle. Where does this fall on your main man standings? Negative ten main men. It's not. Negative it's not quite skin. It's not quite skin a rink bad. But this is a top to bottom bad fucking movie. And when you factor all the things into, like, it's not trying to be bad. It thinks it's doing good. It thinks it's doing, uh, you know, cultural representation well. And maybe, like I said, feel free to tell me I'm wrong that I don't get it. But you should still want a good movie to. Be your representation. You shouldn't have to settle for something as color by numbers as this. And that's my biggest issue with it. It's if no superhero movies have existed, I could go into this and probably go, oh, you know, that was kind of cool. That was kind of fun. But the fact of the matter is I've seen two decades of superhero movies now. I've seen them constantly get bigger. I've seen the fight scenes constantly get fucking more insane. I had an airport scene in Civil War, which is what, ten, almost 10 years ago now, 
that nothing in this movie can even fucking hold a candle to. There is nothing, nothing in this movie. It's 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 like going to the corner deli and buying the bootleg He-Man action figures. Uh, I'm going to give it a, a two and a half. Uh, you know, I enjoyed it while I was watching it. You know, I laughed some. Maybe you'll cry some. Uh, you know, I, I will say. I like, cried. <laughs> uh, like I said. Uh, I don't think the action is is bad, but I just don't think nothing nothing stands out. No fight scene stands out. You know, it's a lot of just punching and smashing. There's nothing to it. No set piece. It's just that's okay. So yeah, you no, know, it's two and a half. It's all right. Like I said, I'll never think about this movie again. It'll be like, oh yeah, remember Blue Beetle? Oh, Joe hated that one. Uh, that's what it's gonna be. Like that's it. So you know, don't run and see it. It'll be on Max in a couple weeks. And then, yeah, sure. Push play. Why not? I think you're going to be like me. Most people are not going to be Joe here. They're going to be like, yeah, it was fine. It was whatever. You know, okay. (laughs) Oh, Joe. Goodness gracious. So this week we're going to stay home, Joe. We're we're going to watch something on the TV. I love TV. Mm, We're going to. We're going to head back to a, a faraway place a long, long time ago. We're going back to Star Wars, Joe. Are you excited? No. <laughs> yeah, you are. Come on. What it's Ahsoka this? time. Oh. Yeah. Say, ah, Ahsoka. Um, <laughs> you like her. I do like Ahsoka. Like I said, I'm in the past, I have said that I'm a very big fan of Clone Wars I've grown very attached to the character of Ahsoka Tano. So I am excited for this upcoming series. Have you watched Rebels? Yes, I've watched Rebels. Okay. I don't like it as much as Clone Wars. A uh, different style of animation really kind of throws me off a little bit. Stories are still good and fun and entertaining, but I, I do enjoy Clone Wars more. I've never watched Rebels, so I don't know. I might Maybe I'll be a little lost here. I'm not sure. You know, I hear it's very, you know, it's kind of like a, a direct, not direct sequel, but it's like a little sequel series to uh, to Rebels there. We'll see. Yeah, what's well, following up on the canon, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm excited because I do like Ahsoka. And uh, I'll, I don't know when he's going to show up, but my double main man, Grand Admiral Thrawn, baby. Oh. I cannot wait to see him finally in live action. Oh, baby. So good. I'm very excited. So that drops. I think there's a special Tuesday night, but it's Wednesday, usually the Wednesday thing. There's gotcha. two episodes. So I think it's like about almost two hours of this. It's like a movie. So we're going to treat it as such. Hopefully, you know, Right, streaming shows nowadays, they do things where they drop, you know, two or three episodes, and that's yeah. kind of one thing, and then it leads to the next thing. And, you know, I'm not sure how many episodes this is. I should have double checked. I think it's about six or eight. So, uh, you know, let's see. I'm excited. I love Star yeah. Wars. So I'm good. I'm excited to be back, hanging with some friends, maybe meet some new friends. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Who you knows? know what else I want to watch this week? And this is just for me. Don't feel like you guys got to watch along. But I'm behind on Winning Time. Winning Time is back on HBO Max. I watched the yes. first episode. Me too. I, just... I didn't love it. It was still good. But I'm like, if the whole thing is just going to be like Magic Johnson just wants to fuck, then like. I mean, if that's the story, though, right? Like, <laughs> I guess but it's like how many episodes of that do I need? No, I get it. I watched the first one. It was good. It was fine. But yeah, I haven't gone back to it. Uh, I'll do that. Won't do that. Won't go there. All right. Mm, so we got some stuff to watch next week, Joe. But first, we got to finish up this week, Gomez. Mm, let's do it, baby. It's now time for the big finish. Oh, Joe, it's Big finish time. Who's ready to spin that wheel? Let's do it. There we go. Let's go. Play round and round. Oh, oh, oh. Van Halen's 
songs. All right. Mm, this is one of these where you go, oh, wait, and then you realize they got a lot more songs than you think. They do. So here we go. Yeah, they're definitely a band like that. Mine is very easy. My number one is very easy. Um, it's actually a Van Hagar song, which I know will ruffle some feathers, but it was the theme song for the big Pepsi, uh, Crystal Pepsi marketing ad campaign in the early 90s. It's right now. Hey, there's no tomorrow. That's a great song. Love I need, it. I need a second. been a while i haven't listened to van halen in a while so i gotta i gotta tell like i said yeah, i went to a, their own it was guitar hero van halen yes they did have a van halen i think it was guitar hero but i could be wrong but yeah that's right they did have a van halen that's right it was like van halen metallica aerosmith yeah green day i think that's it maybe one more and then rock band Beatles. that was good no, number mm. two for me ain't talking about love yeah i think i was gonna say that there i'm gonna put that on the list i don't know if it's number one but ain't talking about love definitely on there because I, I went to see them when they came back when they first came back with uh when they brought back uh what's his face uh david lee roth mm -hmm. and uh i was you know they play like 20 songs and i'm like i knew like 18 of them 17 yeah. of them and i was like Oh man, this was a fun concert. Like I was like just going to like, oh, you know, I'll see Van Halen. And I was like, this is a good ass concert. They had a lot of fucking songs. Running with the devil. I think I might throw Running with the Devil on there. Okay. Mm. My number three is gonna be. I think there's another Van Hagar song actually. Oh my it's goodness. Dreams. I love this song. It's in so many movies, so many TV shows, so many montages. We get higher and higher, straight up we'll climb. Usually it's like when the guy finally gets to kiss his crush or something. Oh, you know, so funny. That's so good. So Van Halen Dreams, number three for me. I had it and then it's slow. Do you uh, know no Gary? Was Gary Cerrone? There's no uh, none of those uh, no, Van Halen's. He had that once. <laughs> oh man, I had uh, what the hell? I'm so sorry. I had it and I lost it. I was like, oh yeah, I like that one. Let me say this one. And now I can't find it. Why can't this be love? We'll say why can't this be That's love? It's nice. Go. That's a good That's one. A good one. Oh right, man! That's a if I because I'm like I'm looking. I'm like, oh, I, I do like that one. I think I like that one. Mm, I'm happy. With even that. even list. trying to go through the list and select the top three, I really had to look. But I, I do have those are standouts for me. So yeah, mm. you got to think about it a little bit. But at the end of the day, those for me, those are what works. So make sure to if you're watching on YouTube, drop them in the comments. Your top three Van Halen songs. Mm, yeah, baby. Mm. All right, let's get the hell out of here, Joe. Thank you guys for listening to the Car Jomez podcast. Remember to hit that subscribe button. Leave a five-star review wherever it is that you are listening to this podcast. Follow us on all the social media at Car Jomez. You can follow my personal stuff at the Joe Shoes, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Joe Shoes. If you'd like to buy a shirt and support, YouTube.com slash Joe Shoes for some eating videos. And, of course, who could forget the brand new major bendy figure available on, as until supplies run out over at MajorPodMerch.com. Mm, I love it. I'm the Gomez154, Instagram, Twitter. And now, Joe, I'm on Blue Sky. Uh -oh. I got an invite code. Woo, baby. Oh, I don't know. There's nobody on there, really. But I was going to say, gonna... what one more social media medium for you to ignore. Woo. With, with power and thrill. So we'll see. But I'm on there. Uh, don't forget, follow that Twitch stream. Twitch.tv slash Mez Movie. You never know, folks. And that's it for this week. So, Gomez, why don't we make like Tom and Cruz? Peace.